Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be solving question 19 from the second chapter of the Peer and Johnson textbook. And we have these two forces of P and Q that are applied to the lead of a storage bin. As we can see, we know that the force P is 48 newtons and our Q is 60 newtons. We need to determine by trigonometry the magnitude and the direction of the resultant of these two forces. So using trigonometry first of all we have to figure some angles and if we use the triangle rule in order to find the resultant of these two so we'll have the force q which is 60 newtons and we also have the force p if we draw a line parallel to force p this is going to be our force p which is 48 newtons and the vector that connects the tail of the first vector to the head of the second one would be our resultant. So this will be our resultant, which we can show it with R. And we have to figure out the value of the magnitude and also the direction that it makes. So first of all, let's figure out some of these angles in here. And if we draw our vertical line in here, we can find some of these angles. First of all, if we want to find this angle, uh, it's not that hard to find that to find it because we know this whole angle is a right angle since this is our horizontal. So basically, 90 minus 55 minus 25 is going to give us this angle that we are trying to find. So basically, 90 minus 80 which is going to be 10 degrees so if that angle is 10 degrees uh this angle right here would be 10 degrees too and now we can find another angle in here let's uh find this angle so we know if you want to find that angle it will be 85 minus 55 which is 30 degrees and we know this angle that we found in the previous step was 10 degrees so here we have 30 minus 10 or 20 degrees and that angle in there is what we have in here so this angle here would be 20 degrees too the reason we did that is that now we can find this angle here if we call this angle alpha alpha would be basically 180 minus 20 degrees minus 10 degrees or 150 degrees and now that we have that we should be good to use our law of cosines which means we can find the magnitude of r in the triangle that we have in here so basically r squared is equal to 48 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 48 times 60 times cosine of the angle in front of r which is the alpha that we found in the previous step so 150 degrees and here we can find r which would be the square root of what we have in the previous step so let's calculate that so 48 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 48 times 60 times cosine of 150 and that's going to be 10 892.31 and if we find the square root of that answer it's gonna give us 104.37 so now we found the magnitude of the r and let's figure out the direction that it makes with our horizontal so what we can do we can call this angle here beta and we can use the law of sines in order to find that angle so if you want to find that we have sine of beta over the the side of triangle like in front of that which is the 48 newton and this will be equal to we can go with sine of alpha again which we already found sine of 150 degrees over what we found for r which was 104.37 so here we can find sine of beta and if we cross multiply in here we have 480 times sine of 150 degrees over 104.37 so 48 times sine of 150 divided by 104.37 
So it's going to be 0 0.22995. And all we have to do in here is to find the sine inverse of that value in previous step 995. So we're going to find sine inverse of answer from previous step. So the angle beta in here would be 13.29 degrees. But what we are interested in here is to find the angle of R with our x-axis or our horizontal. And let's see if we can find that one or no. So we can find this angle here, which from the previous step was the sum of these two angles, which we know is 55 plus 25. So that angle in here would be 55 plus 25 which is 80 degrees and basically we can show our gamma and we can see that the the sum of these two angles with the right side of our horizontal or our x-axis would be 80 plus 13.29 which is more than 90 degrees and actually my figure is not showing it correctly so the r is actually more toward the left because it's more than 90 degrees so if we call this angle here maybe gamma, we can find gamma, which is 180 minus 80 minus what we have in here, or our beta, which was 13.29. So our gamma would be 180 minus 80 minus 13.29. So it will be 86.71. So if we want to show our R as the final answer in here, we figure out that the magnitude is 104.37, or we can show it rounded up, 4, and the angle, as I mentioned, uh, it would be this angle, which we call it gamma, or the angle is 86.71 degrees. So the common way of showing the r is going with this acute angle instead of going on the right side which is a, which is a little bit uh, higher than or greater than 90 degrees so usually we go with the acute angle as the final answer so this would be the final answer for this question including the magnitude and the direction of the r so hope everything was clear let me know if you guys have any questions and you guys take care also in the next one